Fishing, fishing, of living life in the kingdom with no sin and no still in the killing. Read the scriptures for wisdom. Within the scriptures, it's written that the Messiah was risen so we could live in peace. Yeah. Father, can I get one mic? Lord, can I get one mic? Yeah. All I need is one mic. Of living life in the kingdom with no sin and no still in the killing. Just try to envision a vision of living life in the kingdom with no sin and no still in the killing. Lord. Matthew 7. We'll start from verse 12, just like we did, and we're just going to finish up with this. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, you do even unto them. This is the fulfillment of the law, helping the poor and then we need to help each other. Just like you see in Acts 2, that was the church. That's why Yeshua said, on this church, on this rock. That's an example. Peter was preaching on this rock. They came together. They had all things together. No one thought anything was there. Those that had houses sold their houses in the land. And they gave, they helped each other out. And they were feeding the poor. They were extending themselves to other, other people. This is what the church is about. Not the foolishness that we see today, man. Okay, verse 13. Enter ye the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. We think about them. We are in out you better change that mindset man it's talking about you okay um leader to destruction and there are many um many be there be which go in there at be um, because the straight straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead it into life and only few find it and so few is one at a time okay now, beware of false prophets. Don't let no one deceive you. Just like you say in 1 Corinthians 6. Don't let no one deceive you. Okay? Beware of false prophets. Beware means be very careful. Okay? Which come to you is a warning. Come to you in sheep clothes. They're not going to come labeled, I am a false prophet. But inwardly, just like you see Yeshia, said he didn't trust himself with them because he knew what was in man. Inwardly, outwardly, they can do whatever they want. They can have their garments long to the foot. They can have fringes long as you know, whatever, man. You know, but inwardly, okay, they are raven and wolves, raven and wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Okay, let's keep going. So, what fruits do men gather grapes from tons or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree that bringeth forth good fruit, but um, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but corrupt tree bringeth forth a corrupt fruit. It's just what it is. Don't let no one deceive you. Check their fruits. Prove a friend. You've got to prove a friend. I don't have one counselor of a thousand. You can see that in Ecclesiasticus. That's Sirach in the book of the Apocrypha, but I don't want to go into that right now. Okay? It says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Even so, every good fruit bringeth forth good. Um, every good tree bringeth forth good fruits. We are tree of righteousness, the planting of the Most High. Is a good tree. You bring forth good fruit. If the light in you is darkness. How great is that darkness? The eye, the light of the eye, the light, the um, the the your light of the of the body is the eyes. That's why that the snake. Eyes of covetousness, whatever that snake inside your eyes. 
to get rid of that first before you can see clearly so you can get rid of the snake in your neighbor's eyes or the little speck in your neighbor's eyes okay right a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruits neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruits every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is bring forth uh, not forth good fruits is hewn down and cast into the fire just like you see in revelation he says you better return back to your first law i'm going to take your lamps that out of his place you're going to get killed cut down okay he says i'll read that again that was so good every tree that bringeth not forth good fruits is hewn down and cast into the fire the shai said it this way as well he says salt is good but if salt has lost its flavor if you're supposed to keep the lord's touches going you ain't trusted with the oracles of the most high a lot of people, are, people don't fear the most high you have been trusted with the oracles of the most high and you're playing games if salt has lost its uh, flavor how can it now be flavored again it's worthless it's not good to be sand, it's not good to be for anything. Men just trample it over, it's like nothing. Okay, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Let's go now to 21. This is the point now. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, Master, Master, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will, that's the righteousness. Remember, will, the will, that a highest righteousness. So me to his righteousness, no, you're the last lap now. Come on, race with me to the end now. Okay, keep up, come on. Right, you need to gird your, the loins of your mind, man. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Come on, sharpen your sword. Okay? Iron sharpening iron. We need to sharpen each other, man. Because it's a war out there. Come on, let's go. And like I showed you earlier, it's a sin not to go to war. Alright. Okay. Not everyone that said unto me, we're reading Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Don't be deceived, man. Right? But he that doeth the will of my Father. And we see in um, Psalms chapter 40, verse 8, you know, I delight to do thy will, higher. Thy law is within my heart. Keeping his law such as a commandment. His righteousness, not our righteousness. When you start to bring your righteousness now, you're lukewarm, man. That's a tricky place to be. He's going to cut you down. Can take your lamp stand off. Says I will either be hot or cold. If you keep the laws, you keep the laws. If you're not keeping the laws, we know you're not keeping the laws. You're not being given the laws. You're a gentile. But if you look one, I'll spit you out of my mouth. You're disgusting to me. That's why Yeshaya, the issues he had was more mainly with the hypocrites. The Pharisees were the teachers of the law, because the word Pharisee means teacher of the law. They were seated on the seat of Moses. But like he said in uh, Matthew chapter 23, he says don't do what they're doing because they say you do what they say you should do but don't do what they're doing because they say and do not hypocrites don't be like that okay and that's what annoys the father that's what annoyed the son that's what irritated him he said he'll spit you out of his mouth man because you're uncircumcised in the heart you might be circumcised on the outward you might appear to everyone to be but it's what's inside of you that maliciousness, maliciousness, envy. I see demons floating all over Israel. Maliciousness, envy, jealousy, strife, debate. How about unity, love, endurance, peace, long suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, patience, meekness, humility. And humility ain't slap on the cheek, turn another, no. That was our punishment for the sin because Ahio was punishing us. Okay? I might wrap it up with that. Just give you a little, you know, bonus. Like the slap on the cheek, turn another precept so you can, you can digest that afterward. But let's finish this. We'll wrap this up now and then I'll just throw that in as a bonus. Okay? Right. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not... Okay, I know we're rushing, I know we're rushing, but the same things that we just got to, mm hmm, let's let it sink in properly. Because this is what we're reading this for years and years and years, and we think it's them against us. We are in, they're out. We are in the narrow road, they're in the, the broad road. They need to learn the name of Yeshaya and Ahaya. You know, we are saved, they're not. None of you are saved, man. If you're not helping the poor and the needy, and keeping all the laws such as the commandments, you are not saved. So that's why it says, awake, it's high time to wake up, for now your righteousness is nearer 
than when you first believed. And it's not believing in Jesus. No, it's believing in Yeshaya. When you first believed, that's not what your salvation is. Salvation is nearer than when you first believed. That's why you see he said to Zacchaeus, Now, the kingdom of heaven has come to you. Because he gave half of his goods to the poor. Salvation has come to this house. That's what Yeshaya said. Let's call it properly, man. Salvation has come to this house. Mm. Wake up, man. Listen, listen. You know, take out the wax in your ears, man. For once, humble yourself and listen to the word of the Most High. It's the truth that will set you free, man. Right. Many will say in that, to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name. Have we not cast out devils in thy name? Done many wonderful works in thy name. And then will I prophesy unto them, I never knew you. This is speaking to the whole house of Israel, including you that know Ahai and Shai. Okay, I've showed you what you need to do. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. How do you break iniquity? By sh judging the cost of the poor. So let's just finish it by reading Daniel again so that I re reiterate that and we'll finish. Your iniquity. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Get you Daniel and then I'll um, go to 1 Corinthians 13. Let's start adding the bonuses in there now. We're finished now. Um, just going to add a little bit, you know, because you guys stayed with me to the end. So, you know, I'll just give you some bonuses. Let's go. Back to Daniel chapter 4 verse 27. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sin by righteousness. What did we see in Matthew chapter 7? I never knew you. Depart from me, you walker, ye that work iniquity, and break off thy sin by righteousness, by sadak, by judging the cause of the poor and the needy. Gonna see that on another angle. No, it's the same angle. We're just gonna see you see how like all the prophets were speaking of Ruach, speaking the same things. And thine iniquity, iniquities, remember? Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Keep up now. Back to Daniel 4.27 again. And thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. That's how you break off your iniquity. Right. Now, I'm still going to get you. Um, slap on the cheek, turn another. Okay. Right. Let's see. If that's um, what they, the angle people are bringing it today now is like, okay, you know, Ahio wants us to just take all the BS that people bring to us, you know. No, we keep peace, you know. We're ambassadors of peace. But if anyone's going to try to obstruct the work of the Most High, you can believe my stick going to be on there, you know. Like, it's, my stick is also my weapon as well. So... I ain't, I ain't here playing games, man. I ain't out here to play games. My life all the way on to death. Bleed that. Okay? But we'll get the angle of that. Like, that would be the bonus. Like, But before we do that, let's just get 1 Corinthians chapter 13. By now, you should see it clearly. But let's just seal it up with this. Okay? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels... That's the tongues of fallen angels, man. Yeah, there are tongues of angels. But that's to edify. Most times you do that in the spirit. With your understanding, you don't do that most of the times. When you do speak in tongues, it's of tongues that other people know. Just like when they were in that with the spirit. It's that like everyone heard each other in their own language. Okay? Don't seek to be ba 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 like them. It's like that's why Yeshua said, "Don't pray like the heathens, man." You know, he told us how to pray. Apanawa shaba shamayam kadash haya shamka haya malatwar kata baratazaka haya esha barataza kawa haya bashamayam latala nawa lakam kaliwang wasalak nawa chawabwa nawa kasalak nawa chawabwa yanawa walata bayan nawa banasa yawan abal hawa shaina wa mayan right kaya laka hamalakwat wahada wahata parat lai walamiam aman. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and for, uh, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Do what he said to do. Stop seeking your own righteousness. 
Ba 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 ba. Right. The tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, have not love, and become a sounding brass and a tinkling symbol. Let's keep on going. And though I have the gift of prophecy, so know the ba 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 and now you have the gift of prophecy. You know, where you can see things that come to pass and they actually come to pass. Let's keep on going. And understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have faith that I could move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. If I have not learned to love my neighbors myself, I am absolutely nothing. If the church doesn't get to the state that when Paul, when Peter, you know, gave the sermon and they came together, all that believed and they were of one heart, one soul, and one mind, and they shared all things together, not loving, um, not, um, not, you no know, one thinking anything was theirs. You know, but they shed all things together, breaking bread daily from house to house. When you don't come together, everything that we do is nothing. Do I bestow all my goods? Now this is even righteousness. You're giving to the poor, right? And feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned, you don't love your life unto death. And, ha and, um, and have no love, it profited me nothing. God, be long-suffering. God, love each other. Okay? Now, you now break down what love is. Love suffers long. It's kind. You know, envy it, not envy. Char char um, love vaulted as is charity. I'm just saying love so that you understand what I'm saying. Vaulted not itself, not proud. It's not puffed up. Do it not behave itself unseemly. Seek it not her own. It's not easily provoked. It's not easily provoked. That sounded so good, I'll say it again. It's not easily provoked. You rebuke. But don't be any grudges. Think no evil. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Rejoice in keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Abide all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. There will come a time when you prophesy something that won't come to pass. Right. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. There comes a time when you will not even be hearing from the heavens like you were hearing in all the voices of the angels, of the malachs. Whether they be knowledge, it will vanish. There will come a time when you come to me, bro, give me some of this wisdom, man. I'll be like, yo, man, I need some wisdom from you. You know? Okay. Um, but we know in part and we all prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is per in part shall be done away. Okay, so um, the other part talks that when I was a man, I understood like a man. Well, let's not go into that. Okay, so I'm going to deal with now that turn on the cheek, slap on the cheek, turn on another. Before we, before we go to that, we're doing, dealing with that now. But let's just start with um, Luke. Where well, Shai said to arm themselves, man. And the anger, why is it that we're doing it? You know, why are we, you know, defending ourselves? We're not starting anything. Defending ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We honor all men, but we love the brotherhood. Just like Peter said. That's how Peter said it in Peter, uh, 1 Peter 2. Okay, Luke chapter 22, verse 25. Yeshaya said unto them, When I sent you without purse, so, you know, he, earlier on, he sent them out, told them, don't take anything. No, don't take any purse, don't take any, any script, don't, no writing pads, nothing. You know, don't take a change of shoes, you know. Um, lack ye anything? And they said nothing. They didn't lack anything because the hire was provided for them. So they learned to seek him and to let him be their provision. Okay? But said he unto them, but... Then said he unto them, but now, but now, but now, he that has a purse, let him take it. If you've got some money, start saving up. This is what we need strategy now. We start to think in terms of war and not in terms of peace. We start to start to, um, like, start to plan how to get our procurement, how to build our supplies, how to start to, you know, arm each other, how to, how to, you know, equip each other financially, you know, psychologically, you know, mentally, physiologically, you know, and train ourselves physically to fight. Some of you just need to do some running and some push-ups again. Get rid of that bare belly, start to fast, start to do some sit-ups, start to gird the loins of your mind. Um, 
I'll read that, that last bit of 36 again. And he said unto them, But now, he that has a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. So, every, whatever you need right now, you know, start planning things, start writing things down, start planning strategy. Strategy is literally means general generalship. It's war tactics. It's you have tactics. You have strategy. Strategy is more long term. Tactics is how you implement the strategy on a daily basis. Implement that strategy as you're going along, because things are going to change. You have the war, but we have to also have battles. We're going to lose some battles. We're going to win some battles. We have to go through the drawing board. That's how you develop tactics. Because you can draw a strategy, but it doesn't go to plan. Not, things don't always go as you plan them. But we live by fate. Okay. And Yeshaya always is about us preparing ourselves. That's why he says the ones that the five wise, five foolish, they both all had lamps, you know, the lamps were burning, you know, but the wise they foresaw. They knew that the time is coming when they need to, they, they prepared adequately. They had enough oil to carry them through. But the foolish they have, they have enough supply. Some of us are going to die of famine. Some of us are just going to die of exhaustion because we haven't trained our body to take the intensity that's coming. None of us know what it is about. It's going to be painful. It's going to be dreadful. It's going to be serious. But, you know, a higher is doing, we have a higher. He's our strength. Okay? So we lean on him. We don't dread the fears of the other. We don't fear as others are fearing. Let a higher be your fear. Isaiah 8. Right. Verse 37 now. Luke 22 verse 37. Let's start bracing now. Come on. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressions. So this is the point. Now let's, let's finish up 36 again. Let's read that again. That was so good. Let's read it one more time. Then said he unto them. But, but now. He that has a purse, let him take it. And likewise, his script. And he that has no sword. Today I'm wearing this sword is your gun. He that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. You've got to arm yourself. You've got to protect yourself. That's how we start to, need to start to plan. Right. For I say unto you that that which, um, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. This is your shy speaking, you know. Slap on him, cheek, turn another. Right. And he, that which is written of me must, must yet be accomplished. This work needs to be finished. The foundation has been laid. But he's got to finish it. Or oh, anyone that's coming around looking, I'm going to say, oh, this man started to build. But he, he started, started building, but he never finished what he was building. It's shining about that. It ain't about waving no white flags. He's going to finish this. Okay. Um, and it says, and he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And it's approaching. The darkness is drawing closer. I see darkness. Okay, so let's get that slap on the cheek on another uh, precept now. Lamentation. Get your lamentation and then I'll wrap it up with one Corinth, 2 Corinthians 7. Lamentations chapter 3. Let's start from verse 26. Let's start from 25. A higher is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of a higher. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. He sitteth alone, he keepeth silent, because he has borne it upon himself. That's that slap on the cheek to another, because we bore it upon ourselves. But don't take my word for it. Remember, no private interpretation. Let the scripture speak. Let's keep going. Come on now. He put his mouth to the dust. If so be, there may be hope. Right. He giveth his cheek to him that smited him. That's what Yeshua was saying. Look, you better you know do what the Romans are saying. Because you don't you can't fight them, man. 
You're not ready. Your righteousness is not ready. If you try to fight them, they're going to destroy you. And the high is not on your side. You guys brought this upon yourself. So don't be trying because the zealots want to start fighting. It's like, no. So they slap you on one cheek, turn another. If they take your coat, you know, try to provoke you, give them, you know, give them, give them everything they need. You know, they tell you to go one mile, go two. Because the day of vengeance has not come yet. Still need to, uh, people still need work. Okay. I'll read that again because that sounded so good. He put out his mouth to the dust. If so, there may be hope. Verse 30. He giveth his cheek to him that smited him. He is filled full of reproach. That's what we've been. We've been letting the system bash us and, you know, all sorts of things. It bash us financially, physically, morally, spiritually, all sorts of you know, atrocities right from transatlantic slave trade, just trans-Saharan slave trade, even way before that when the Medes and the Persians, you know, like when Arabs were persecuting us, where they were selling us into slavery, when our own people were selling each other into slavery, all sorts of things that was going on, you know, all that stuff was just our punishment. Okay, we cast it upon ourselves, but we stop keeping the lost touches the commandments of the Most High, as was given to us in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 8, said to us, if you don't keep the commandments, these curses shall come upon you. And this were the curses that came upon us, and these curses are still on us, but now it says we hope for the salvation is coming. For now your salvation is nearer than when you first believed. Are you listening now? So you know righteousness? Sadaka, Sadak. You remember? Sadaka, Sadak. Say that. Sadaka, Sadak. Come on. Sadaka, Sadak. You got it? All right. Let's keep going now. Verse 31, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 31. For a higher will not cast off forever, he will not cast off forever. But, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doeth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. To crush under his feet all the prisons of earth, to turn aside the right, the right. Right to clean water, free clean water without fluoride and all the nonsense they put into it. Right to eating food naturally that Aha is giving us without us having to succumb to the GMO. Right to be able to breathe clean fresh air without the chem trails. The right due to a man. Right to just have, you know, to eat, to drink, to have a family, to take care of your family, to teach them the precepts, the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High. You know, not to be subject to, you know, like mixing up swine into everything putting it into the lotion so that it can go into our skin into going to our blood vessels because it takes about 20, 26 seconds there about is it 46 or 26 seconds for anything on the surface of your epidermal layer to go into your blood vessels man into your bloodstream that's why they put it all that's why they put you know all this stuff you know the sweet gelatin what do you think they're targeting with it because they know that they don't want us to keep the lost touches of commandments that they were even reading the book of Maccabees, they were forcing them to eat swine. That's what they're doing. They're, this is passive, forcing us to um, passivity to break the commandments. For he doeth not afflict, um, let, um, the, afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men, to crush them under his feet, all the prisons of the earth, to turn aside the right to do. Um, a man before the face of the Most High to support the man in the cause of to, to, in, the, in his cause, the Most High approved not. Who is he that um, that said, and it shall um, come to pass? It cometh to pass when a high has not commanded it. So a high is the one that made this happen to us. Okay, so we just finish it up now with one Corinthians chapter seven. I mean, two Corinthians chapter seven now. Come on, come on, let's race to the end. Come on, you stayed with me all this time. Verse 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. For when we were caught to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without we were fighting, and within we were fierce. Paul fought physically. Okay, so that slap on the cheeks of another wing in that time. Which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, oh, 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 as it is in heaven, give us this day 
our daily bread and forgive us for our day as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation Thou the kingdom, power and the glory.